Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to extract specific latitude and longitude coordinates from the climate model data that I showed you how to download and open in the previous videos. I'm going to walk through real quick here how to open it again so that you get the information that you need. Um, so we're getting started. We already have our uh, workspace set for the directory that we want and that's the folder where I have all my climate model data saved already and a recap from the previous video um, first we need the libraries we need this library that's pretty much it ncdf4 so we're saving our netcdf file into this variable called ncin and what you're doing here is the function is called ncopen and then in here you put the file name inside of the folder that you are in already in your working directory so let's just use let's see ccsm let's do access right access 3 and if you didn't know this already, in R, when you start typing and then you press tab, it auto-populates it so you don't have to type out the whole thing. So now we have it open and you want to get the variables from your netcdf file. How you do it is ncvar for variable get. ncn is the name of the file. The variable name is latitude, lat for latitude. So you're saving the latitude data that is in the ncn file, which is access13 rcp 4.5 data, maximum air temperature, into this local variable you're calling lat. And then you can do the same thing for longitude data. And there we go. In this case, we're also going to get the uh, time data and see bar get and see in time but if you see it doesn't really make sense that doesn't really register as a uh, time unit right so let's get some more information out of it so get and see in time units so what we're doing here is getting the uh, attribute in your netcdf data from the file called ncn, the variable time, and you're getting the attribute units, and you're saving it into the, this variable called tunits. Oh, oh man. Okay, we're missing a quotation mark here. So now if we see tunits, t, your time variable is saved as days since January 1st, 2001. So this is how many dates it has been since then. Well, that's still not very helpful, right? So what we can do is we continue and we can create a time variable that we understand better. So now we're saving this nt is the dimensions of your time variable, which there's 1140 of. And when I was downloading this data, I downloaded monthly data. So that's about 95 years worth of data. And when does it start? Let's see. Now we're going to use this to set a new uh, time unit in a way that we understand better. Just call it this. Oh, cron. We need this library called cron. We can do time things. There we go. Hold on, that's not the one I wanted to see. So now you have your time is saved in a way that we can understand better with dates and times. So our data starts in uh, January 16, 2006, and then it ends in 2100. So that's that. Now for the fun part. So we have the variable lat, lawn, and time. And what we need now is your temperature array. So your temperature array, the way you get it is, as I showed before, nc var get nc in, and the variable is called TAS max. So if we look at the dimensions of temp array, 
It's a 3D array with 192, 145, and 1140. So if we multiply all that, there is this many data points or temperature um, points in this array. That's a little hard to understand, so let's break it down a little bit. So the temperature array has is 192 by 145 by 1140. It's longitude by latitude by your time. And I was thinking of a good way to show this. And this is how I like to think about it. You have a latitude dimension, a longitude dimension. So now you have a 2D map, right? Longitude here, latitude there. And in the Z axis, you have your time period. That's straight. Okay, time period, right? And then in each of these data points, you have a temperature recording. But this data comes in a discrete format. So you can only get the data at a specific point of latitude, longitude, and timestamp. And the z-axis, let's say this is the map. We're just facing it edge on. And now you have stacks of the map through time. That's what the time is, right? Tell you for time. Let's say you want to get a data from here. We're trying to isolate a specific latitude and longitude point through time to see what temperature is going to look like in that. And what we can do then is plot the specific sheet of paper, latitude, no, the specific point in the sheet of paper, a specific point through time. That's what we're trying to do. However, since the points are discrete, if you want location data for an area over here, you're going to have to get data for the closest point because there is no data here. You're going to have to do this, some downscaling, and I don't know how to do that. So the best thing I can teach you is how to extract the closest latitude and longitude coordinate right there. So let's get to it. So now that we have the latitude, longitude, and the temperature array, you can... Uh, close your file and we can work with the uh, variables we extracted and saved as local variables. So let's do that. So to extract things from the array, what you do is just do these square brackets and then there's three numbers that you need to put in, right? Because it's a three-dimensional array. So if we get... And what we're doing here is getting the temperature at the first latitude, I mean longitude, the first longitude, which is zero, first latitude, which is negative 90, and first time period, but it's actually teeny, which is that date. And that's the temperature at that place in that time in Kelvin. So let's say you are in maps and you say, I want to get data from this place right here. So Google Maps returns it and shows you at the bottom uh, the coordinates in latitude and longitude. Latitude and longitude, yep. Uh, so what we can do to get the data closest to that point is there's a function that I forgot, uh, but it's which min absolute value lat minus 33.54 from that value right there. And what this is doing is going to return you the index in the latitude variable that is closest to this value. So it's lat 100, and you can double check that. And there you go, 33.75 is the closest discrete value in the latitude variable to the one you're looking for. And you can do the same thing for the longitude. And it was 54. And it's longitude 30. There we go. That's the closest value. And now we're going to create a temperature slice of your array for the specific coordinates of longitude 30 
latitude 100 and then you want all the time periods right so you're going to leave this space blank there you go so now you have all the projected temperatures for that specific location in kelvin and if you want to convert that to degrees Celsius, you can just do temperature slice minus 273.15 because that's the conversion from Kelvin to Celsius. And now you have it in degrees Celsius. And what you can do now is plot things. So let's say you want to plot it T nu, your temperature slice. And there we go, that's what it looks like. What we're showing here is um, temperature in degrees Celsius through time. Then here you can see 2027, 2081, and you can fix these. Um, and I'm going to assume you know how to do that if you're already working with NetCDF files. And it's a little crazy like that because it is monthly data, but you can get the annual averages and have a cleaner plot to see better. So I hope this is helpful. Um, pretty straightforward extracting it's just like extracting a specific um, data from an array that you want uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or any video requests that you have you can also email me i'll add my email address in the description box below and that is all